The full moon in Libra is coming up on March 28th, and the timing of this full moon couldn't be more perfect. At the exact time that this full moon is occurring, there's also something major energetically happening on the planet that you may not be aware of. And this full moon energy is going to help you be able to navigate the current times with more ease and peace, if you know how to use this energy, that is. In this video, you're going to learn what the major themes for this full moon in Libra are and how they affect you. Then we're going to go over the one thing you must focus on for this full moon. And then in part three, I'm going to share my top three tips to help you work with this powerful full moon energy more effectively. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. On to part one of the video, what this full moon is focusing on. So first I'm gonna get into some of the details of what this specific full moon in Libra is all about, and then I'm going to get into the one key thing thing that's going on with this full moon. All right. So let's get into the generals about a full moon and a full moon in Libra. So full moon energy is usually where we are talking about completions. We're talking about reaping what we sow. So the full moon cycle is really where energy has matured. It's a, it's in a level of maturation that it's not in when we're going through the cycle of the new moon. So in the new moon, we plant new things. We, we, we germinate, we put seeds in the ground and then we wait for those seeds to kind of be able to be ready to be harvested and that's what the full moon energy is all about completions uh, finishing cycles maturation of energy and really kind of of reaping what you what you've sown in the past all right so that's general full moon energy but then when the full moon is associated with a specific sign, it also takes on the characteristics of that specific zodiac sign. And the upcoming moon, full moon is going to be in the sign of Libra. So now we have the characteristics of Libra coming in. So Libra is the sign, it's, it's um, uh, the symbol for Libra is that scale, right? And the scale really is the, the perfect symbolism for what this zodiac sign really means. So Libra is all about balance. It's about really kind of, of fairness and justice. So the scale also represents justice. It's used a lot as a symbol of, of justice in the judicial system. So this scale pertaining to Libra has a lot to do with the energies of balance, of justice, of fairness. Um, liking to have things just, just perfectly balanced. Um, Libra is a sign that doesn't really like extremes. So extreme black, extreme white, uh, Libra doesn't really like it. Libra likes to be nice and balanced. Libra likes, uh, homeostasis. Um, Libra loves to be around people. So the sign of Libra is actually very, um, it's very people focused. And the reason is because Libra is governed by the planet Venus and Venus is all about love, but also relationships relationships. And so the sign of Libra brings in this beautiful love of connection with people, but connection with people in a very balanced, um, kind of level headed way. All right. So, so really, if I had to say that there's, if there's one word that would kind of characterize Libra, it's balance. Um, it's really having the two plates of the scale kind of equally balanced. And, and that's what really symbolizes Libra. And so Libra coming into this full moon, now we're talking about an energy of just a lot of fairness, a lot of justice, and a lot of balance in all things. A couple of other features that Libra brings in that I want to discuss because these two words are going to be important. One of them is harmonizing. Harmonizing is sort of goes hand in hand with balancing, but it's not really the same thing. So balancing is more having, having the two sides of the scale evenly, uh, evenly distributed. That's more what balance is. Harmonizing is different. Harmonizing is just having harmony in all relationships. Sometimes a relationship may be off balance in the sense that one person 
person may be doing more than another, for example. So it may be a little bit off balance. The responsibilities aren't shared 50, 50, but sometimes maybe that may, may be necessary in a relationship. And so that's where the word harmonization comes in. Harmonizing doesn't always mean 50, 50 equal balance. Harmonizing means that everything is okay, even within the distribution of energy at the time. Okay. So harmonization, this is a really important word right now. And another feature of Libra that's really playing in, especially in these times that we're going through right now is that Libra, Libra doesn't just look to balance things. Libra really doesn't like extremes. And so what that means is that Libra is a sign that really, really loves to listen to both sides of an argument or both sides of different opinions. Libra loves to listen to this side and then to that side and kind of mingle them and enmesh them and, and look for the gray areas and look for the commonalities. There's another great word. There's another great word that just literally dropped on my head right now about Libra. Libra loves to see and perceive commonalities amongst all of us and in the universe rather than seeing differences. Okay. This is kind of another way of, of, of the characteristic of fairness that also bring the Libra brings in. Okay. So, so, but the words commonality and the words harmonization, harmonizing is really important right now. Those are really a couple of key features that I wanted to talk about also related to this uh, Libra energy in this full moon. Now I want to leave a little side note here, ding, ding, because if you don't know much about moon energy, I just wanted to leave this specific side note here, which is important when always working with, with a full moon is that the full moon is a feminine energy. The moon, not just the full moon. Let me correct that. The moon is a very feminine energy. And so whenever we're working with moon energy, we're working with the feminine. All right. That's a really important characteristic of moon energy. So when I'm talking about feminine, or yin energy, we're talking about working receptivity. So knowing how to receive, knowing how to be still, knowing how to go inward. You see, these are all characteristics of the feminine being nurturing. The feminine is very nurturing. So that's another uh, aspect of the moon herself as an archetypal energy. So when we work with this energy of the moon, we're tapping into feminine energy, which is going to come in handy later on in this video. Okay. Now that we have talked about the major themes that are going on with this full moon in Libra and just full moon energy in general. Now I want to get into the one important thing that's happening right now at the same time that this full moon energy is occurring. All right. So what, what's been happening on the planet? I've been talking about this actually since the beginning of 2020. So the beginning of 2020 with the onset of the pandemic, something happened on the planet. And I've been talking about that since that time. And really what's been occurring is when the COVID pandemic really hit, the planet herself was already in an energy shift. She was shifting her energy grid from masculine dominant energy into feminine dominant energy. Okay. This has been going on since the beginning of 2020, and it's really started to intensify there at the end of 2020 and into the beginning of 2021. There was this major shift in energy and really what the way that you can think about it and why this major shift has occurred so quickly is because the planet herself is ascending. She's evolving. She has her own consciousness and she has what's known as an, as a, a, a grid. She has an energy grid. So you can think of the earth having an energy grid in the same way that we humans have an energy system. Okay. And so that energy grid shifted and it's been shifting very, very rapidly, especially since the, the beginning of 2020, but really into 2021, that, that changed into 2021, that change has really accentuated. All right. Now think of this energy shift as the way that a pendulum works. Okay. So for thousands of years, we've been in masculine dominant energy and that masculine dominant energy was really excessive and it created a lot of imbalances on the planet. And so now to correct the energy, the, the planet herself is literally shifting kind of like a pendulum. So if you, if you know how a pendulum work, a pendulum always uh, rocks in equal proportion to each 
each side, okay? So it's going to rock in equal proportion to each side until it eventually rests at the middle. And that's what's happening on the planet right now. She's moving her energy from masculine dominance into feminine dominance as a way to reestablish balance on the planet. And that's what's occurring right now. It's really been accentuated. This shift into feminine energy has really been accentuated in the beginning of 2021 as I'm shooting this video. So what this means for us is that as we're sitting on the planet, we're basically a guest on this beautiful planet. And it means that when, when this planet changes energy, we have to learn really quickly how to adapt and how to thrive in the new energies that the planet presents. And so right now, what we're going through is we're being asked to sort of relearn how to be on the planet with a grid that is now feminine dominant in energy. And this presents a couple of problems for us all. First, it presents a problem because we are so templated to be in masculine dominance, whether we're men or women. Okay. So remember masculine and feminine energies, they don't have to do with genders. We all have yin and yang energies within us. But the issue is for a really long time on the planet, we've all been templated to be in masculine dominance, whether we're women or men. So there's been a preference on the planet for a really long time. There's been a preference towards action, towards doing, towards uh, accomplishing, building, think, doing things on the outside, which is really a representation of masculine energy. But as with all things, when one of the energies is imbalanced, imbalanced, it can create a lot of problems on the planet. And so we are having a really hard time now tapping into this new feminine energy because we're all programmed to be in masculine dominance. Uh, not all of us. I'm not going to say all of us, because there are some people that actually are already thriving really well because they, they held on to their feminine, um, to their feminine energy and they knew how to cultivate it and they're more comfortable in it. But I would say the vast majority of humans on the planet right now, whether men or women have a difficult time to be in their feminine and they're more templated to be, uh, in the masculine energy. The second issue for us when it comes to this new feminine dominance is not only are we templated to be in masculine energy, so we're more used to using that energy. But the second issue is that the feminine is sort of unknown to us because we haven't really tapped into this feminine energy. I would say for thousands of years, we haven't really tapped into the fullness of feminine energy for at least maybe two, 3000 years, if not more. And so the wisdom of the feminine energy has sort of been lost on all of us for multiple, multiple generations. And so the feminine is sort of something new to us, uh, something unknown. I mean, it's something unknown to us because we're just not used to working with this energy. So now we have to relearn. It's sort of like a toddler starting to walk again. We have to relearn how to tap into feminine energy because feminine energy is really different from masculine. She operates in a different way. It's an energy that is totally views the world in a different way. Not that it's a better energy than the masculine or, or the masculine is a better energy. There is no better energy. They're just really different energies. And so for us to learn how to work with feminine energy, it's really is like a toddler learning how to walk for the first time. It's almost like we're, we're not just discovering, rediscovering this feminine. It's almost like we are discovering this feminine for the first time because we've been so disconnected from this energy for so long. And especially at the shooting of this video, I'm shooting this video right after we came out of a really intense month in 2021, which was the month of February. And I talked about how this month of February is the most intense month of the whole year for us. There was a lot of stuff going on in the month of February. And that month has really been pulling us more and more and more into our feminine energy. We are being asked to embody feminine energy more. And that's where the issue comes in. Okay. So are you ready? <laughs> Here's the issue, the major issue that we're having at really, that's kind of going hand in hand with this full moon. The major issue is that, is that our masculine energy is really having a hard time standing down. <laughs> that's the major issue occurring right now. Masculine energy is having a major problem standing down and relaxing, because, especially right now, because the acceleration, the speed at which we are required to move from masculine into feminine and to learn how to use that energy, it's been so fast 
that what's happening is the young energy, the masculine energy doesn't know what to do with itself. <laughs> and so it's having a little bit of a hard time relaxing, standing down and letting the feminine rise. There's been problems going on within each one of us and outside in collective society. We can see what's going on. The, the, the masculine is really having a rough time learning how to relax learning how to stand down and learning how to let the feminine rise. So here are some things that are going on when the, with the inner masculine in each one of us and collectively we can see this. Okay. So here's some of the main issues. One of them is that the masculine energy is very restless right now. And you could probably feel this in yourself. Okay. So the masculine energy is very restless, very restless because this energy has been in control for thousands of years. And then suddenly we're asking it to stand down so that the feminine rises and the masculine's going, what? I'm not doing that. I've been in charge for thousands of years. <laughs> I'm not going to stand down. No, no, no. And so there's restlessness in the energy. So that's one thing. Um, another thing happening to this masculine, he's having a hard time trusting. Okay. So having a hard time trusting, because again, he's been in charge dominant for so long that he's having a hard time trusting in the feminine energy. So there's a lot of, of healing of wounding that's occurring between masculine and feminine energy within us. And that healing is occurring with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of ruffled feathers. Okay. So, so that's one, uh, one area. The masculine is having a hard time trusting. The masculine is having a hard time standing down. The masculine is having a hard time surrendering to the feminine. This is a major theme right now. The masculine is just so restless that he's having a hard time. I can, I can feel the energy within me and also in the collective. It's like that masculine is really just just resisting, resisting. And the feminine is trying to come in and embrace him. And he's just like, no, no, <laughs> I could feel that energetically. And maybe you can feel that in yourself too. So there's a sort of a resistance of this masculine to surrendering to the embracing of the feminine, the feminine. Again, remember the characteristics that I talked about a little while ago with the full moon, that it's feminine, that the feminine is nurturing, receptive. So the feminine is trying to come in and nurture that masculine. And he's like, no, <laughs> I'm not letting you. I'm in control. I'm in charge. <laughs> so there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of tension as these two energies begin to harmonize. You see that word we were talking about a little while ago. Now you can start to understand why this full moon in Libra is perfectly timed. And it has to do with the energy of masculine and feminine, how these there's being resistance between the two of them uh, in, into harmonizing with each other. And one last issue that the masculine energy is having right now is the issue of having a hard time following the feminine. <laughs> This is, this is really hard for the current masculine because the current masculine is very, is a very wounded energy. Again, it's been dominant and in control for thousands of years. And there's been a lot of karma that's been created with that imbalance. And so now as that karma is disintegrating, uh, the, the masculine is having a little bit of a hard time to surrendering to following the feminine, that he doesn't always have to be the leader that the feminine can lead the way also. And in fact, we're going into these times where the yin energy within us is the one that's going to be leading the way for the foreseeable future, at least until the end of our lifetime. So you, you can see now that we really have to learn how to use this, this energy and how to work with it. Okay. So, so following the feminine is another issue that the masculine is having right now, resisting that, that standing down and following the feminine. And this resistance is really playing out in a very 3d material kind of way. All right. And the, probably the biggest way in which this internal resistance, this, this difficulty that in the restlessness that the masculine is having right now, it's playing out in 3d reality, actually in the form of physical symptoms. Many of us are having physical body symptoms that is a byproduct of that masculine energy, having a really hard time in resisting. Okay. And I'll give you an example of what's been happening to me. Cause I've been really feeling this, this energy uh, playing out and resisting within me. I've been tapping into the collective, but the themes of the collective have also been playing out in me. All right. So I'll give you an example of what's been happening to me. And maybe this has been happening to you. Let me know in the comments after this video, if you've been feeling any of the symptoms that I'm going to talk about now. 
But what's been happening with me is that if I go too much into my masculine and I stay in there for too long, which is pretty easy for me because I'm naturally masculine dominant. So sometimes I have a really hard time tapping into this new energy. But when I stay in the masculine, when I polarize into my masculine energy and I stay there too long, I start to get physical symptoms. And one that I've been having in the last few days is when I work intensely, I'm too much in my masculine and I'll start to get horrible headaches, <laughs> really horrible pressure headaches. And I don't ever get headaches. My, I have a really healthy body that doesn't really ever have anything wrong with it. So I started to get these really, really intense uh, pressure headaches that forced me to stop working. And eventually at first I was like, oh, I'm going to power through this headache. <laughs> but then I understood that no, my body was showing me something and I could sit in meditation. And it's almost like I could feel the planet saying, I will not allow this energy imbalance to happen anymore. I could feel this. The planet is saying this to us. I will not allow this energy imbalance anymore. And what's happening is when we polarize too much, our physical body starts to show us in the form of maybe headaches, maybe aches and pains, all kinds of things are going on. But what's cool about these symptoms is that as soon as I sat down and I felt what it was and I, and I connected with the resistance that my masculine energy was having, I sat down, I started to take a nice deep breath and I just started to, to, um, develop mantras. Really. I, I like to use mantras a lot. And I just started to say, I surrender to the feminine. I relax. I stop. I learn to be in silence. I'm still. And the more that I would dip into my feminine energy, the headache would go away, away right away. <laughs> so in one sense, I'm very, very thankful that this beautiful body of mine is showing me when I'm out of balance and that it, I can't stay out of balance. So I have to come back and harmonize my energy. So I'm very thankful that my body is doing that but sometimes it takes a while for us to pick up that that's what's happening. So let me know in the comments below, if you're having symptoms similar to what I'm describing here. And, and now you know that they are related to this internal resistance, this little tug of war that's going on between the masculine and the feminine. Now I want to leave a little side note here. Ding, ding. I want to leave a little side note because I want to make sure that I talked about this a little bit already, but I want to make sure that this is crystal clear. So I'm going to do a little side note here to reemphasize this point. When I'm talking about the energy on the planet, transitioning from masculine dominance to feminine dominance as a part of her own evolution, the planet's own evolution, I'm not in any way saying that the feminine is better than the masculine. And that's why we're going into feminine dominance because she's better. No, that's not the case. That's not what's happening at all. What's happening is merely a byproduct. It's a calibration. There's the word that just dropped on my head. This is a really good word. What's happening on the, pa on the planet is just a recalibration of the energy. And in order to recalibrate the enormous imbalances that have been going on for thousands of years, the planet has literally shifted into feminine dominance as a way to recalibrate. It has nothing to do with the feminine energy being better than the masculine. We have no, there's no energy that's better than the other, right? And the symbol that I love to use is the traditional Taoist symbol of the yin and yang. I'm sure you've seen that symbol before. Half of the circle is white and half of the circle is black, but there's a really interesting characteristic of this yin yang, uh, Taoist symbol. And that is there's a black dot on the white side of the circle. And there's a white dot on the black side of the circle, which means that not only are the feminine and masculine energies side by side with each other, but they are also contained in each other. And this is a really beautiful symbolic interpretation of yin yang. These two energies need each other. There's no energy that's better than, than the other. They need each other. They interpenetrate each other. They are interconnected with each other and they cannot be separated ever. But the, the, what we're talking about now is literally just a byproduct of recalibration. And so that's just something that the planet is doing herself. That's really beyond our control. But what we can do is we can learn to rediscover our feminine and learn to thrive in this new energy that's on the planet. All right. So I wanted to leave this side note here. There's no energy that's better than the other. What's happening is simply a recalibration on the planet. So now that you know a little bit about the headache part and that one physical symptom that I was talking 
talking to you about. I actually want to list a few more because you may be going through some physical issues and some symptoms right now and not even realize that it's coming from this internal resistance of the masculine energy. All right. So let me list a few more for you. So if you're having generalized aches and pains, specifically tension. All right. So if you feeling your body tense up, this can actually be a sign of that masculine energy being restless and being resisting. So when the, when the masculine resists, you can somaticize that in your body as increased in tension in your muscles. Okay. So that can be going on with you, uh, aches and pains, general aches and pains, headaches like mine, like I was having the other day, you can feel pressure. So just internal pressure, pressure to be doing something. I should be doing this, or I should be doing that, or I should be doing more. <laughs> okay. This is another sign of that masculine being restless and, and out of balance. Another thing that could be happening is you can be having increase in anxiety or stress. When the internal masculine is restless, that can lead to an increase in anxiety and stress very, very easily. So you may be going through that right now. Another one that's happening a lot is increased mental activity. So the masculine represents the mental body, the mind. And so when the masculine is restless, your mind is going to be restless. Okay. So if you feel your mind going a million miles an hour these days, just thinking nonstop drama after drama, thought after thought, thought really restless. This can be a sign of this masculine energy being really resisting harmonization. And that could be something that could be happening in your life right now too. So now that you know, all of these symptoms, all of these general things that are going on with the masculine between the masculine and the feminine. Now let's bring the full moon in Libra in, and you can see how this full moon happening at this particular time is, can really be ramping up these issues because this full moon is in the sign of Libra, the sign that asks for balance and harmonization. So this full moon comes in and it's asking the feminine and the masculine to harmonize and the masculine's going, no, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. And so what's happening is as this full moon energy is coming in, the internal resistance of the masculine can actually be kicking up a notch. It could be exacerbated with the intensity of a full moon. All right. So you may be feeling this this internal resistance of the masculine ramp up in the days before the full moon and in the days after the full moon, a few days before and a few days after. So if you feel this happening, you know that it's the full moon that's really coming in and sort of forcing that masculine and that feminine to harmonize. And there's the, may a little bit of, of feathers ruffled in the process. All right. I'm not going to go deeper on feminine energy because I actually shot a whole video on what this new energy is about the feminine dominance of the new energy and how you can better work with this new energy on the planet. Shot a whole video on that. I'm going to leave links in the description box below so you can watch after this one. If you want to go deeper on how to really thrive in this new energy. On to part two of the video, how to work with this full moon. So I'm going to give you my top three tips. Even though this moon is coming in and it could really be intensifying the inner struggle of masculine and feminine, the good news is the flip side of that is that if you know how to work with this full moon energy, you can actually harmonize those energies a lot faster. So the internal struggle could stop. Okay. So, so I'm actually really excited for this full moon because it's a great opportunity for action, for us to actually fully harmonize this masculine and feminine energy instead of struggling with this inner resistance moving forward. Okay. So this is a great time to clean up that inner resistance. And I'm going to give you three top tips on how to work with this energy, how to work with this full moon, especially when it pertains to that inner resistance of the masculine to standing down that's happening right now. The first tip is to stop, <laughs> to simply and utterly stop. <laughs> and because this is something that the masculine, the, the restlessness, the restlessness of the masculine right now is pulling and creating pressure to act to do things, to move, do this, do that, do the other. Let's go do this. Let's create a business. Let's do this. Where's my mission? Hello. What's my purpose? <laughs> and so the, the restlessness of the masculine is really sort of the masculine is you can think of it as the masculine firing in all directions right now because he's so restless. And so a way to counteract this restlessness is to just stop. And what I mean by stop is literally doing nothing. <laughs> and what's interesting is that this is something that I actually schedule in my own schedule. I'll, I'll give you, I'll share with you how I do this, how I actually stop 
because I'm masculine dominant, and especially in these last, I would say since the beginning of the year, my energy has been really, I've been struggling to really harmonize this energy, calm down this masculine energy because I'm already naturally masculine dominant. And so if you're naturally masculine dominant already, you may have to do the same things that I'm doing right now. One of the things that I do is I schedule do nothing time. I literally will schedule it in my schedule where I could be working. And if, when my do nothing time comes up on my schedule, I put my computer down and I literally do nothing. Meaning I'll go sit on the couch and I'll just close my eyes. I'm not watching TV either. (laughs) So I'll sit on the couch. I'll close my eyes. I just go into a a nice little meditation with myself. I sit with myself. Sometimes I like, like love to just go sit on my balcony and just, just overlook the, the trees that I can see from my balcony. I have a beautiful park in front of my balcony so I can just, uh, you know, look out, take in the nice, beautiful breeze, just watch the trees move. Th- this, these are some of the examples that, that I'm giving you of what do nothing means. Literally just sitting there doing nothing, connecting with myself. So I have to actually schedule these do nothing times in my schedule because otherwise I won't do it. I'll forget about it. Okay. And I'll just keep plowing through things. So here's a tip for you. If you have to, if this is something that you need to schedule because you're going to forget it, schedule it in your daily schedule. Just have a little do nothing slot for yourself. And it could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is, or it could be longer if you want it to be. And just do what what I just recommended here, either sit in meditation, just sit, maybe sit in your backyard, just relax, connect with nature, just really unplug from everything and do nothing. (laughs) This is a great way to just calm down that masculine energy that's been very restless and that constantly wants to be on the go doing things all the time. Tip number two is to focus on the body. This is a really crucial tip. And really why we're focusing on the body is because yin energy or feminine energy is very, it's a very embodied energy. Your feminine lives in the body. It's a very embodied energy. So when you connect with your body, fully connecting with your body, you connect immediately with the feminine. Okay. And so that'll help you connect more, not only with this full moon energy, because moon energy is feminine in nature, but also connecting with your own inner feminine. All right. So the way that, you know, going back to the example that I gave you a little while ago, where I started to have these really strong pressure headaches, um, you know, and I found out that, that it was just, I was too much in my, in my masculine energy. What I did was I actually stopped working. I went home and I started to do some, a feminine practice that I love to do. I work with the feminine at night. So I love to do these practices at night. I get a candle going. I burn some incense. I clear my energy with the incense or with the Palo Santo with sacred smoke. I'll dance a little bit. I'll drum a lot. Okay. So drumming is something that really works well. Also drumming is the oldest feminine in an energy tradition on the planet. So I'll drum. I started to dance. I started to move. The more that I connected with my body and that I started to dance and and move into my body, the, the headache literally started to melt away. Okay. So the more deeply I went into my feminine energy, the more the headache started to disappear. Okay. So, so create some kind of ceremony like this, a feminine ceremony for yourself where you dance, maybe you drum or you listen to drumming music. You have a candle, you work with the energy of the night. You really connect with your body deeply, deeply with your body. And you'll see that just this focus on the body, this focus on this beautiful awareness in your physical body is going to automatically also calm the masculine down and help in the harmonization of the energy. Now, if you want to know other, if you want to do other things other than dancing and and the things that I just described, you can also go into your feminine energy by again, focusing on the body, but maybe with different techniques. So maybe massage. So maybe go get yourself a massage, or if you don't have money to go get a massage or you can't get a massage, uh, do self massage on yourself. There's another way to connect with your body. Um, you can also do, uh, you can also talk to your body directly. Okay. So have direct communication with your body. So talk to your body, ask it what it needs from you really go into this beautiful direct communication. Your body is an incredible, incredible ecosystem of trillions of sentient cells. This is a very intelligent system. It will talk to you if you talk to it. (laughs) So, so learn how to communicate with your body, but whatever technique you use to get into the body could be exercise. There's another one, whatever technique you use to get into the body and to 
communicate with the body. The bottom line is always the same. You want to be more focused on the body and more in connection with the body because the more you're in connection with the body, the more you're in connection with feminine. The third tip to work with this full moon energy is to connect with the feminine. So this is sort of a continuation of the last tip that I was talking about, but I left this one here as a separate tip because I want to share with you a specific technique for working with the feminine. Okay. So what we're, what I'm talking about really in this tip is you're going to ask the feminine to rise within you and you're going to do it through a ceremony, through the use of ceremony. I love to use ceremony to work with the feminine. Okay. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to set a beautiful ceremony space, kind of in the same, the same, really what I was talking about before in the, st in the tip before have some candles, have some beautiful, uh, Palo Santo or incense, just have some drumming music if you want, or have some music, be in the dark. And literally what you're going to do is you are going to design a invocation mantra for that feminine energy. And what you're going to do is you're going to start to, you're going to open space. You're going to burn some incense. You're going to have that beautiful music moving you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start using your mantra to invoke feminine energy in a specific way, because you're asking the feminine energy to rise within you. Okay. So here's a mantra that I love to use as you're dancing and maybe you're drumming. If you don't have a drum, maybe you have shamanic music going in the background. You're, you're dancing, you're dancing, and you're going to start saying out loud. I surrender to my feminine. And then you're going to say, I ask my feminine to rise within me and take over. Okay. This is a really powerful, powerful, powerful mantra. I ask my feminine energy to rise within me and please take over. Okay. So I ask my feminine energy to rise within me and take over. Okay. You keep repeating this mantra as you're dancing, as you're drumming, as you're going through the ceremony, you can do this for as long as you want. The more you repeat the mantra, the more you pull on that invocation, the more you're going to concentrate energy. Okay. And here's a pro tip for this ceremony, right? Here's a little pro tip bonus points. If you also start to invoke archetypal feminine energy to come and work with you. And what I mean by this is you can start to actually invoke actual symbols of feminine energy. So for example, you can invoke goddesses like Kuan Yin. You can invoke uh, beautiful Hindu goddesses like a Durga or a Kali. You see, you can invoke a Mary Magdalene. You can invoke all kinds of different feminine archetypal energies. You can invoke them to come to you and to please work with you and make the rise help with the rise of the feminine within you. All right. So this is a bonus. Uh, this is a pro tip. You don't have to work with archetypal energies. If you don't feel comfortable, if you don't like to call on other beings, you don't have to, you can just invoke the feminine energy within you. But I wanted to leave this pro tip here because sometimes when we're really working with energy, and we invoke their archetypal form from the outside. It really, really helps in, in us being able to complete the exercise and concentrate more energy. Now, once you do this invocation ceremony, if you've been working, if you did work with the feminine archetypes and you just, let's say you did a, a 20 or a 30 minute ceremony at the end of your ceremony, you're going to stop repeating your mantra. You're going to turn the music off and you're just going to sit by your candle in complete silence in the dark. Okay. You're going to sit by your candle in silence, no more music. You're in the dark, just with your candle and you are going to sit and you're going to feel just really feel this. This step is really important in the ceremony because when you're sitting in silence and you're just feeling, you're actually allowing that in that silence for, for the energy to integrate well within you. Okay. So once I invoke the energy, I'm then going to sit with it and I'm going to see how I feel and I'm going to let it integrate. I'm going to give it a little bit of time to integrate within me. Okay. So that's the end of the, that's the end of that ceremony. Now, if you want to go deeper into feminine energy and really learning all about how to work with feminine energy and how to ask this feminine energy to rise within you, I shot a whole video on the divine feminine energy. This is going to be a great video for you to go deeper into, to help you really thrive in this new feminine energy. I'll leave links in the description box below so you can watch after this video. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, which one of the tips that I just described in this video, will you be using first on this full moon? I want to hear all about it. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular guided meditations. And don't forget the videos that I talked about in this video. That'll be great viewing for you after this. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.